Hello gems, welcome to another video of A series. In this video, we are going to discuss previous year bit set questions from the chapter of motion in a plane. Okay, so before starting straight with this video, I am assuming that all of you are well versed with all the concepts of motion in a plane. So without a further ado, let's begin. Okay, so as usual, let us begin the discussion with some easy peasy questions first and then we'll slowly increase the level as the discussion proceeds and finally discussing some really good ones. Okay, so first question here on the board from Bitset 2018. Now you are expected uh, that every time you have a question over here, you'll pause the video and give it a humble try. Okay. So the question, this question has given you a P vector, a Q vector, and it has asked you for the magnitude of their resultant addition vector such a straightforward question right you can pause and try i'll do it now so p plus q let's add them first okay so 2 i cap uh, minus 2 j cap minus 3 plus 1 right and plus 4 minus 2 that will be plus 2 k cap okay so we have to find the magnitude so just square uh, add the squares of their components so 4 4 4 right 2 square 2 square 2 square and 4 3 times 4 into 3 so 2 root 3 okay that 4 will come out as 2 so 2 root 3 is the answer okay quite straightforward right let's move to the next question now so next question here on the board is from bitset 2017 let me just explain you what's happening in this question so in this question you have a projectile motion so the initial velocity vector of this projectile motion is 2i cap plus 3j cap okay so you are supposed to comment on the final velocity vector you are supposed to tell me the final velocity vector here are your options you can give it a try okay so again a very simple question right for those who know about the symmetry of projectile motion, it's a cakewalk, okay? Uh, now, one very common point regarding ground-to-ground -ground projectile motion is that the velocity in the x-direction does not change, right? There is no acceleration in the x-direction, so the velocity in the x-direction does not change, okay? So, this 2i cap, which is the velocity in the x-direction, won't change, okay? So, option A, get out of the way, it cannot change. Option D also, so these two options are wrong, okay? So what can we say about the velocity in the y direction now? Velocity in the x direction does not change. What about y now? Okay. Uh, so velocity in the y direction, you can say, uh, see that for half of the journey, it will go on decreasing. At the highest point, uh, the velocity in the y direction is zero, right? And then again, it will go on increasing. But now in the downward direction, okay? The velocity is increasing, but in the downward direction. You can see that. And due to symmetry of that, a projectile motion you'll achieve the same value okay same value 3 but in the downward direction now it was uh, the initially the velocity was along positive j cap now it will be along negative j cap okay so that will be the only difference so option c is the correct choice okay so let's move to the next set of questions now so next set of questions from Bitset 2010, this question 3 uh, is again quite simple and even that question 4 is not that difficult, okay. So let's try them out one by one, you can pause and try to. So question 3 says body moving in circular motion with constant speed, which of the following is true, okay. So will it have a constant velocity, is this motion not accelerated, will it have an inward acceleration or will it have an outward acceleration, okay. So quite simple, right? Even those who know the very basics of circular motion will be able to crack this question, right? Because in circular motion, you'll know that uh, every time we have this inward acceleration, right? We call it the centripetal acceleration or the radial acceleration, right? So in every circular motion, we have this inward acceleration. So option C, uh, without any doubt, is the correct choice, okay? Uh, now coming to question four, I will just have to explain you a bunch of things over here. So here you have two projectile motions A and B. Each of them you are going to throw uh, at an initial speed of U. Okay, U and projectile one, uh, 1 or A you are going to throw it at an angle of 40 degrees with respect to ground. Projectile B you are going to throw it at an angle of 50 degrees with respect to ground. Okay, so you are just supposed to compare now. Uh, a will fall first, B will fall first, or both of them will fall first, uh, both of them will fall at the same time or none of this, okay? 
so quite a simple question again because we just have to compare their fall time right or the time of flight okay so basically let's write the formula for time of flight which is 2u sin theta by g right 2u sin theta by g from here you can see that this time period is directly proportional to sin theta right now one more mathematical result you should know about sin theta over here uh, which is sin theta is increasing function okay sin theta is increasing function what do i mean by this uh, so it simply means that if you increase this theta sin theta will increase okay if you increase theta if you increase the value of theta sin theta will increase so here also you can see that if you increase theta 40 to 50 sin theta will increase sin theta increases time period will increase repeat that okay so if you increase theta 40 to 50 right we increase theta sin theta will increase sin theta increases time period will also increase so the time period of b is more right b will take longer time to fall so basically the answer will be a will fall first uh, it's a who makes it to the ground first right it has a smaller time period okay so quite simple quite conceptual over to the next question so question 5 over here from which side 22 well i'll just explain you what's happening in this question so you have a projectile First, you are going to throw that projectile uh, with a speed u at an angle 15 degrees with respect to ground. Okay. And in this case, you note that the horizontal distance or the range covered by your projectile is 1.5 kilometers. Okay. Now you uh, take the same projectile, you are going to throw it with the same speed u, but uh, now you, you are going to change the angle. So you have uh, slightly changed the angle to 45 degrees. Okay. So in this case, you note that the uh, horizontal distance covered by your projectile now is x okay so you have to uh, find this x find the value of this x okay so again very simple we just have to apply the range formula twice and then compare okay so let's do it so let's apply the range formula which is u square by g sine 2 theta okay so here the range is 1.5 u square right velocity g okay uh, and sine 2 theta sine of 2 into 50 uh, sine of 30 right sine of 30 will be half so we'll get 2 in the denominator now for this one the range is x okay so u square it has the same velocity u square g is same sine 2 theta sine of 2 into 45 sine of 90 sine of 90 is 1 okay so all you have to do is just take the ratio right here you can see that u square by g and u square by g will get cancelled when you take the ratio that will get cancelled and the only uh, variable will be x so you can find that value 1.5 by x and then u square by g gets uh, cancelled right uh, and you are left with half so x is equal to 2 into 1.5 which will be 3 okay so three kilometers is the answer okay so quite a uh, easy question right so again uh, don't keep this misconception uh, in your head that there is some direct relation between range and this angle like uh, here you can see that uh, the angle is made thrice right 15 3 is a 45 so don't think that this range will be thrice two, like 1.5 into 3 no there is no such direct relation here you can see that range becomes twice right twice okay so there is no such direct relation don't uh, create your own concepts okay so let's move to the next question now question 6 over here from bitset 2009 again you can see that this is just another version of the previous question right so here also the same story follows uh, you have thrown a projectile at certain angle it gives you a range r now you change the angle don't change the speed uh, it gives you an uh, range x okay so you have to find that x in terms of r so one way of doing it is the previous approach right so find r in terms of formula uh, x in terms of formula and then take the ratio you'll have the x in terms of r okay so that is a lengthy process right actually this is a very special question and if you know this fact that for a given velocity you can see that both of them will have same velocity so for a given velocity two complementary angles have same ranges okay for a given velocity two complementary angles what do i mean by complementary angles 
complementary angles are angles that add up to 90 okay two angles that add to 90 so here you can see that 60 plus 30 90 okay so for a given velocity two complementary angles will have same range so this x is nothing but r okay you can go by the long approach also and solve it but you'll get the same answer okay so we are just bothered about the answer right don't be a problem solver when you can be a solution seeker words of wisdom okay just one more question which appeared in bitset uh, based on the same concept okay uh, this question had given you two projectile motion as usual thrown with the same speed okay now this is u and this is beta okay uh, and it had already given you that the ranges are equal okay uh, and it has asked you now for the uh, relation between alpha and beta okay so it's just the opposite of this question right it has given you the ranges uh, the velocity is the same it has asked you for the relation between alpha and beta now now uh, if the ranges are same if the initial velocities are same we can use the definition in the opposite way and say that these two angles will be complementary right so the relation that we are looking for is alpha plus beta equals 90 degrees so that was uh, another question uh, from 2008 if i am not wrong okay so you can use the definition in the straightforward way which is for given uh, velocity two project uh, two complementary angles have the same ranges or you can use it the other way around which says uh, for two same ranges uh, with given velocity the two angles will be complementary okay so this way or that way okay so let's move to the next question now so question 8 here on the board it's from which side 2015 this question has given you the equation of trajectory of a projectile motion i hope you know what that is okay so and it has asked you for the maximum horizontal range the maximum horizontal range that your projectile motion can achieve okay so what we have to do we have to just compare this equation with the standard one right so let's write the standard one i'll just write the compressed form okay i hope you know about this format of equation of trajectory if you don't know you can note it down for sure okay so i'll just bring uh, this in that format okay so i'll take x by root 3 common so i'll get 1 over here and x will go so i have g x 1 x will go and 20 so since there was no root 3 over here i have to multiply root 3 okay those are confused can uh, re-multiply and you'll see that you reach over here okay so here you can see that i have to just convert it to the form x by r right so i'll take that g and root 3 in the denominator okay so what i did i take that g and root 3 in the denominator of the denominator okay so it basically means the same thing okay so you can compare that so r is r is nothing but here we get r right so r is nothing but this value right whatever uh, is in the denominator of x so that is 20 by g g i'll put as 10 okay and root 3 this and this gets cancelled and you get 2 by root 3 meters and when you come here you'll see that none of the option match uh, is matching right so what happened where did we go wrong or did we even go wrong first of all okay so actually we didn't go wrong we are asked for the maximum range right remember that okay so first of all find this angle okay i'll explain you why i'm doing this find this angle so 10 theta will be 1 by root 3 right comparing the coefficients of x so you get theta to be 30 degrees so theta is 30 so it won't be the maximum range right this r value is the range of the projectile motion at 30 degrees when is the uh, maximum range achieved it's achieved at 45 degrees okay so this is the range at 30 degrees this is u square sine 2 into 30 degrees okay sine 2 theta by g okay and that value is 2 by root 3 okay but we want r max what is r max it is the formula u square by g right that sine 2 theta becomes 1 so that is the maximum value so all we have to do is to find the value of u square by g okay so we can do it from here 
okay so now it's just solving so 2 root 3 and here also sin uh, sin 60 is root 3 by 2 so that will go on the other side it will be 2 by root 3 so 4 by 3 okay so 4 by 3 is the correct choice okay so the only catch point was over here okay so this is the range at 30 degrees and not 45 degrees we want the maximum horizontal range which uh, which is achieved at 45 degrees so over to the next question question 9 over here is from which said 2012 finally happy to see some words over here in the question okay so it says that for a given uh, u two projectile motions have the same range that's something click you for a given u two projectile motions have same range okay so t1 is the time of flight for, uh, for the first projectile motion t2 is the time of flight for the second projectile motion then their product t1 t2 is proportional to this r is the range okay so the hidden point lies in the very first statement okay for a given velocity u so for the two projectile motions are projected with the same velocity u have the same range what does this mean the two angles are complementary okay so that was the point that you should hold on okay so we have to choose two complementary angles so first for the first projectile motion let it be theta okay and the second one will choose it to be 90 minus theta okay this is a general way of choosing two complementary angles so if you add them theta plus 90 minus theta 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 will get cancelled 90 is the answer right they add up to 90 complementary angles okay so find t1 and t2 now now what is the big deal right just apply the formula 2u sin theta by g t2 is 2u sin 90 minus theta by g so that will be 2u cos theta by g now just multiply them right get their product so you will get u square u square 4 u square by g square okay sin theta into cos theta sin theta into cos theta okay so we want the formula of range so it's hidden uh, over here somewhere so i'll what i'll do is u square i'll separate this two out to u by g okay i'll separate this out and you'll see the formula of range u square g uh, 2 sin theta cos theta okay just verify it by multiplying 4 uh, this won't be u 2 by g right so 4 use uh, 4 4 this gives you 4 u square by g square sin theta cos theta okay so this is nothing but the formula of range okay so you can directly see that uh, t1 into t2 is directly proportional to range okay so that is our answer right so over to the next question question 10 you can see that it has repeated over the years once in 2008 and then again in 2016 okay so the question says you have two projectile motion again projected with the same velocity u okay one angle is theta other other angle is pi by 2 minus theta again complementary angles right if you add this two you will get pi by 2 which is uh, 90 degrees right so again these two are complementary angles okay so your bit set is very very fond of this complementary angle theory okay so you have to find a relation between h1 h2 and r now the question itself is prompting that both of them have same range right r h1 h2 r okay so let's do it okay quite a simple job so let's find h1 first just apply the formula right u square sin square theta by 2g okay h2 it will be u square sin square 90 minus theta by 2g so that will give us u square cos square theta by 2g okay so one way of doing it is trial and error uh, so first of all you can note that this option d will be wrong uh, it's not dimensionally consistent okay uh, I, i'm not doing that okay so option a uh just let's multiply and see okay let's multiply h1 and h2 and see what do we get uh, so what we'll get is um u to the power 4 sin square theta into cos square theta by 2g 2g 4g okay 
so this is nothing but h1 into h2 right so we have to uh, see if we can get a range through this okay range formula uh, somewhere so let's see if we can create r over here right uh, let's see if we can make uh, r over here so what i'll do is take 1 by 4 out uh, and i'll take the square sign common u square sign square sign theta cos theta by g the whole square okay I took the square common and 1 by 4 I took out of that uh, thing. So now you can see that it's almost the formula of range. What is the formula of range? u square sine sin 2 theta or you can write it as 2 sin theta cos theta, right? 2 sin theta cos theta by g, okay? So all we are missing is this 2, right? This 2 is missing. So I can create that 2. So I'll just create that 2. And now once I have created that 2, I have to divide by 2 as well, right? So divide by 2, right? Or divide by 2 square because I have created 2 square, right? I have created 2 square. 2 inside the square sign means 2 square. So I am dividing it by 2 square. So this, this whole thing is nothing but R square, right? This whole thing is R and it is squared. So what you get is R square and here you will get 4 into 4. 2 square is 4, 16, right? So you get h1 into h2. You can see your answer. It will be option A, right? So I have to simplify that. Actually, you can remember this as a general result. Actually, I remember it as a general result for two uh, projectile motion with complementary angles. The range and the heights have this relation. Okay, but I know you have a lot of inorganic chemistry in your head now. So. I insist not to buy heart. Okay, so let's move to the next question now. Okay, question 11 over here is from Bitset 2018. I think it's uh, there in Concepts of Physics 2, uh, the book by Itsi Varma sir. Okay, so a nice story is go going on over here. So you have a tree, on that tree you have a monkey. Uh, there is a hunter over here who is who will shot the bullet. So at, at the exact moment when he shots the bullet, the monkey drops off the tree okay with uh, initial velocity zero the monkey drops off and at the exact same time he shots the bullet okay so you just have to comment okay uh, that will the bullet always hit the monkey will the bullet always miss the monkey or will the uh, the bullet may hit in some cases or and may not hit in some other cases okay uh, that can be also an option or it's totally unpredictable okay i i cannot predict that okay so actually you should go ahead and try this question okay do try it okay now there is one big mathematical way of proving it but we are going to do it by relative projectile motion okay so one of the golden lines that i sta uh, stated in relative projectile motion the usual classes which were going on earlier okay was uh, the relative motion of one project the motion of one projectile motion with respect to another is a straight line okay motion of one projectile motion with respect to another will be a straight line okay so let's go to the relative frame first okay i'll, I'll prove it how okay let's go to the relative fra frame here is your monkey uh, it has initial velocity zero it has acceleration due to gravity g okay here also your bullet will have acceleration due to gravity g bullet is fired in this direction v towards the monkey right initially towards the monkey now you can see that relative acceleration a to 1 will be a to minus a1 g minus g 0 right or you can just flip and keep right so just flip this acceleration let's watch relative to monkey so we are the monkey now okay so flip this velocity and give it to the other one right flip this velocity give it to the bullet sorry not velocity acceleration i'm so sorry so this will go this will go right so relatively there is no acceleration the monkey has initial velocity zero so which means the monkey is at rest right the monkey is not moving relative to the bullet monkey is not moving so it will surely get shot right now one more uh, aspect is there which they didn't mention in the question so the answer will be bullet will always hit the question now one thing they assumed in this question was the range of this projectile motion uh, of the bullet is greater than this distance okay there will be some distance between the hunter and the monkey the range of the projectile will be greater okay range of that 
projectile is greater than the distance between the monkey and the uh, hunter okay so that is assume otherwise if you uh, if the range was smaller okay if the range was for a uh, smaller even the bullet was fired it would have landed down right it wouldn't have reached the monkey at first place okay so this was assumed in the question okay so the answer is bullet will always hit the monkey okay and of course no animals were harmed during this video except the fly in the beginning okay so let's move to the next question now okay question 12 so question 12 over here is from bitset 2016 you can see that it's from the beautiful concept of projectile on an incline okay for those who are no, uh, new to this concept you have to check the video on projectile on an incline okay it will be better if you check that out i'll suggest it over here uh, those who know about it let's do it okay so uh, this question asks us for the range of the projectile uh, now the projectile motion is happening on an incline so uh, how do we approach such question we use the equation of motion right sx is equal to ux t plus half ax t square okay we don't use the formulae because uh, the formulae for range if you see uh, for projectile on an incline are huge right we don't buy uh, by heart them okay so this distance displacement in x throughout the entire journey will be the range okay and here you can see that ux is zero right initial velocity in the x direction now again we redefine x and y on an incline right we consider uh, perpendicular to incline is y axis uh, along the incline is x axis we redefine it okay uh, now uh, you can see that there is no velocity along the x axis along the incline there is no velocity so this term is zero okay uh, the next term half ax acceleration in the x direction will be g sine of inclination sine of theta right along the incline you have g sine theta uh, perpendicular to the incline you'll have g cos theta okay this was something which we discussed there so that's why i'm suggesting it over here okay so t how to find t time of flight right so 2u sin theta by not sin theta it will be sin 90 okay 2u sin 90 and you can see that the angle of projection is v okay oh sorry the speed of uh, initial velocity is v uh, now 2v sin theta by g cos theta okay 2v sin 90 by g cos theta so that will give us 2v by g cos theta okay so that is the uh, formula for time period okay time period on an incline you just have this extra cos factor over there okay uh, so let's just do it now 2v square now let's just square that right 4v square by g square cos square theta okay so we can say uh, g and this g will get cancelled sign uh, so this 2 and this can get cancelled so 2v square uh, by g 2v square by g 2v square by g 2v square by g this is not the one this is not the one uh, into sine um, sine theta by cos square theta so i can split this cos theta cos theta into cos theta right i have just split, uh, split it that cos theta so sine theta by cos theta is 10 theta and this is sec theta so 2v square by g 10 theta sec theta option c is the correct choice okay so those who are confused over here you should check out the lecture on projectile on an incline okay no more self promotion over to the next question so question 13 over here it's an old bit set question it's from 2007 you can see that okay uh, here you have a projectile motion as usual okay so this projectile motion is projected at a speed of 25 meters per second making an angle theta with respect to ground uh, here you have a wall in between the wall is 5 meters tall so this after two seconds this projectile will just clear that wall okay this projectile will just clear that wall so you have to find that theta now some of you all might be very confused right because this question does not give a direct approach right this question is not very clear 
uh, about the way you are supposed to approach it okay how will we find theta is some random scattered data given to us okay so just follow me up first thing that i'm going to do is resolve this okay i'll just break it into 25 cos theta and opposite to theta you'll have 25 sin theta okay so now let us assume that this distance between the wall uh, and the point of projection is x okay we'll find that x so how will we do that x will be uh, distance is equal to speed into time because here you can see that along the x-axis there is no acceleration right so the velocity remains same so you can use distance is equal to speed which is 25 cos theta into time which is 5 right it takes 5 seconds to reach here right 5 seconds to travel this much distance in x of course it travels in y2 during that time but it takes 5 seconds to reach here this distance in sorry not 5 seconds just 2 seconds 2 seconds to cover this distance in x okay so that will be 50 cos theta okay now we know this distance we know the x coordinate rather okay this will be 50 cos theta and y coordinate will be nothing but 5 right the ball just clears that so we can consider the y coordinate to be 5 now we can use the equation of trajectory right y equals x tan theta minus g x square upon 2 u square cos square theta right so x uh, x is 50 cos y is 5 x is 50 cos theta cos theta into tan theta will be sin theta right again g we can substitute we'll later substitute x is again 50 cos theta so that will be 2500 cos square theta now this cos square theta in the numerator and denominator will get cancelled okay no need to worry about that 2 into u square 2 into initial velocity squared so 25 into 25 right initial velocity was 25 so this 25 and this will get cancelled as 100 times uh, 25 to the 50 50 to the 100 so basically what you have is 5 equals 50 sin theta minus 2g okay i think that is it 2g okay so what we'll do is we'll substitute the value of g 50 sin theta minus 20 okay so now take it to the other side 25 is equal to 50 sin theta so sin theta is half so basically you can see that the angle will be 30 degrees right so the approach was not so clear but yeah this is the way you should do it okay so over to the next question i know this uh, today's class is going to be a bit lengthy because this chapter has a huge weightage in bit set uh, and most of the questions are from projectile motion as you can see okay or uh, so more to more three to four questions to go and then we'll wrap up okay so let's go to the next question now so here is question 14 is from which 2011 so in this question you are given a vector c which is defined as vector a plus vector b theta is the angle between a and b then you have to find which among this statement is correct okay there you have your options so now the very obvious way to do this question okay looking at this you can make out it's the analytical approach right they are uh, speaking of the magnitude so let's consider the magnitude of c it will be given by a square plus b square plus 2 a b cos theta right so what i can do i can just square both the sides so this root sign will go and i'll have a square on this side okay so let's substitute uh, the first case when theta equals 90 degree so you can see that theta equals 90 this cos 90 will be 0 right so c square is equal to a square plus b square right oops okay so case 1 is correct right so you can also see it by pythagoras right if theta is 90 degree that c will form the hypotenuse so a square plus b square equals c square okay uh, now uh, coming to the second second statement okay if theta is greater than 90 theta is greater than 90 so it's uh, in the second quadrant 
so you can say that cos theta will be negative right cos theta in the second quadrant is negative we are discussing case 2 okay so now this term will become negative right a and b are magnitudes they are positive so cos theta is negative so this term entirely will become negative let's understand that through so the example can be 5 uh, 1 plus 2 okay wait 2 plus 5 minus 2 okay minus 2 minus two, uh, plus 2 can get cancelled and you can see that the equation uh, holds right 5 equals 5 okay so what i am going to do is i am going to remove this right i am going to uh, remove this minus 2 okay so you can see that you'll get 7 on this side and you'll get 5 so now the equality is 7 is greater right so what did i do i just removed this 2ab cos theta term okay so that's what is done in this statements as well so once i remove that you can see that a square plus b square is greater than c square a square plus b square is greater than c square okay so here you can say that a square sorry here you can say that statement 2 is correct okay so a square plus b square is greater than c square if theta is greater than 90 and uh, naturally the statement 3 will be wrong right uh, because if you see it says if theta is greater than 90 a square plus b square is less than c square this is contradiction to the second one which we proved to be true so uh, the third one is wrong okay now coming to the last one uh, it says if theta is less than 90 okay let's take that case into consideration if theta is less than 90 okay this is theta so cos theta is positive right this is case 4 okay so cos theta is positive and you can say that okay let's uh, take the this term will be positive right so let's take the equation 5 equals 1 plus 2 plus 2 2 plus 2 4 5 okay you can see that the equation holds now what i will do i will remove this term right 2ab cos theta i'll remove that term so what i will get 3 on this side 5 on this side okay so in this case you can see that c square c square is greater than a square plus b square c square is greater than a square plus b square so fourth uh, statement is also true so the correct choice is c right one two four only okay these statements are correct okay so that's how they fit multiple choice question into single correct format okay so let's move to the next question which will be hopefully the last one okay question 15 the last question for the day is from bit 2011 okay so you can see that it's based on relative projectile motion right or relative motion in two dimensions okay so you have a bus over here which is moving with a speed of 30 meters per second uh, and in there you have a man who looks more like an octopus okay so it's going through uh, throw a projectile at an angle of 60 degrees uh, with a speed of 20 meters per second okay now this 60 degrees is with respect to him right with respect to m this 60 degrees uh, is not the angle with respect to ground okay you are asked for theta with respect to ground okay what will be this what will be the angle of projection as seen by an observer who is at ground okay so that is something which you are asked for of course it will change okay so let's do it so first thing first let's resolve okay so i'll just break that 20 into 20 cos 60 which will be 20 into half so 10 okay along the x axis you'll have 10 right 20 cos 60 10 and 20 sine 20 sine 60 which will be 10 root 3 20 into root 3 by 2 10 root 3 uh, and you can see that the velocity of the bus is 30 meters per second now you can see that the velocity of the bus and this velocity in the x direction will add up right from for somebody who is watching it from ground will seem as if this uh, velocities will add up right so you can basically say that okay those who didn't get this idea i'm going to give you one more approach so hold tight okay so for now vx is 40 meters per second right this two just add up okay now what about vy vy is 10 root 3 okay so the resultant of this two added this okay first let's add this 
it becomes 40 and then you have a resultant right and you are supposed to find this theta now you can easily find it out by using 10 theta is equal to vy by vx right so you can see that theta is equal to uh, 10 theta will be opposite upon adjacent right opposite upon adjacent or vy by vx same thing right so 10 inverse of vy is 10 root 3 vx is 40 this and this will get cancelled so you will have 10 root 10 inverse of root 3 by 4 so that is our answer just another approach for those who didn't get this point how directly the velocity adds up okay so let's consider the x direction again so let's find out what is the velocity of bus with respect to ground it is 30 right straightforward 30 i cap okay let's consider this as the positive x direction this will be apparently the velocity of men with respect to ground right men is also there at rest in the bus so men is also moving with the bus right so velocity of men with respect to ground is same as velocity of bus with respect to ground okay so now velocity of what do we want to find velocity of uh, we want to find this right velocity of projectile with respect to ground this is velocity of projectile with respect to ground in x direction okay so we want to find this okay so first of all what do we have velocity of projectile with respect to men okay in the x direction what is it 20 cos 60 20 cos 60 which is 10 10 i cap okay so we can use the formula velocity of projectile with respect to men equals velocity of projectile with respect to ground v p m is equal to v p minus v m right with respect to ground with respect to ground now we want to find this right this is velocity of men with respect to ground is 30 i cap right and here velocity of projectile with respect to ground is 10 i cap now and you see that it is so simple right so this is 40 i cap okay so right so they just add up right an observer will see that both of those velocities in the x direction will just add up so on the whole the answer is b okay i hope that was clear i'll give you your homework questions then some tips maybe and uh, let's wrap up for today's class okay so over to the homework question now question 16 your homework question in this question you have thrown a projectile up the incline so this projectile finally ends perpendicular to your incline okay so you can see that finally the velocity vector the final velocity vector is perpendicular to the incline okay so you have to find a relation between alpha and theta for such a case okay so that is your homework question just a few general observations that you could make from today's video okay so you might have noticed it that most of the questions were from projectile motion right so it's quite obvious because projectile motion uh, makes up a major section of your motion in a plane okay so a lot of questions are asked from there also now the the questions based on projectile motion has a lot of variety right general questions can be asked questions based on equation of trajectory can be asked question based on relative projectile motion and projectile on an incline can also be asked okay so it has a lot of questions in there and a lot of variety right so projectile motion is a very very important topic as far as uh, your motion in two dimension is concerned okay and even i might be not wrong if i say there will be one question from projectile motion in your bit set papers okay now the second important topic among them is vectors okay so uh, a lot of questions are also asked from vectors okay vectors is also included in motion in two dimension if you uh, see in your ncrt it gives you a nice introduction to vectors right in the beginning of this chapter okay so vectors is also included and uh, keep in mind that uh, the questions based on vector are very very easy okay they are not that tough okay so it's uh, it's an important topic and a easy scoring topic okay so don't miss it out 
Now other other type questions might be based on relative motion in two dimension. Here uh, we can include relative projectile motion too. Okay, uh, range man uh, problems, um, river board problems, which we didn't discuss today, but they are very simple. Okay, uh, they don't appear much in bit set once or twice they may have appeared. Okay, and now questions uh, fourth type of category which is circular motion okay questions on circular motion the basics the very basics of circular motion are asked here and there okay uh, since circular motion is also a motion in two dimension okay and other questions might be also asked okay which just include the extension of the concepts of 1d to two dimensions okay so so let's wrap up for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you soon in the next class. Till then, keep adding subscribers. Keep enjoying physics.